Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash tales from retail. But first let's play r slash drunk or a kid. This one was posted by user Magic Manime. Ding dong ditch in daylight. I ding dong ditched my neighbour crush in broad daylight because my buddies egged me on. She was outside the house. After hitting the doorbell an appropriate amount of times and sprinting away, I jumped over her mulch garden by the front door and went face first into the ground. Broke my collarbone. But she let me in. Okay, so Ding Dong Ditch is a kids game, but I have on occasion played this whilst drunk. I'd walk home at like five in the morning and ring some doorbells on the way home. So this could be a drunk or a child. What do you guys reckon? Find out at the end of the video. This story was posted by Shenanigan HD, where a lady returns 150 pieces of fried chicken. So a few years back, I worked for a large retail slash grocery company. And like most grocery stores, we have a deli section. I worked at the returns desk, which I was still fairly new at. And a customer rolls up with a cart that has two cardboard boxes full of half-eaten fried chicken. I don't think I've ever seen that much fried chicken before. Hello, can I help you? I want to return this fried chicken. What's wrong with it? I ordered this for a family reunion this past weekend. I took it home to my family and when we got to eating it, it was burnt and nasty. We weren't satisfied and I'd like my money back. I'd like to note that she's still wearing her family reunion shirt. She's quoting our fresh food policy, which is a 100% money back guarantee. So I decide to follow through with the return. Although in my head, I'm thinking, why would anyone buy fried chicken from us ever? Of course it was gonna be bad. Our deli food is known for being nasty. Anyway, she hands me her receipt and it says she bought two orders of 75 pieces of chicken, totaling out about $100. I do the return, give her the money back and come round to grab the cart of chicken. It doesn't end there. Later, I'm taking returns, claims back to the respective sections, bakery to bakery, frozen to frozen, etc. I roll the chicken cart over to the deli and the two workers greet me, confused. I don't remember who said what, so I'll refer to them both as deli. Deli, what's this, they ask? Me, claims a lady came and returned these, said they were burnt and nasty. Deli, and you took it back? Me, I shrug. Yeah, it's policy, 100% money back guarantee. At this point, they're now visibly angry. I have a mini freak out and start to doubt myself. Is that the policy? Did I do it wrong? I was still new at return, so it's possible. Me, was I wrong? They tell me no and sigh. They ask what the customer looked like and I describe her to them. They get more angry. Delhi, she came in last weekend to pick up that big order of hers. Took us all day to make it. She comes in and doesn't have enough money. Told us she didn't know it would be that much. She told us about her family reunion and how much it meant to her. She started crying. She had only about $80 on her, so we, the deli and bakery workers, decided to chip in and help her pay for the rest. And three of us looked down at the cart and cardboard boxes filled with half-eaten nasty chicken. This is why I have trust issues. Down in the comments, Ergo Proxy Zero had this to say. Nope, this is why I don't pay for anything for a customer. I'll do a few cents maybe from our tip jar since we don't mind that, but nothing more. I'm here at work and I need money too. I'm empathetic, but not to the point where I'll be swayed by your sob story. Lady literally robbed you guys of $20. It's not much, but it's the concept that she basically took money from someone else. She profited from this. If she had any sense of decency, she would have given the $20 back for the deli staff who helped her pay for her order. And anyway, why did she think weak old fried chicken was going to be tasting nice anyway? This next story was posted by user One True Sneaks. Yes, I have to ID your daughter, even if the wine is for you. She's the one with the money. One thing about the company I work for, everyone gets ID'd for alcohol. Everyone. You could be 90 years old and riding in a scooter. You could be someone I've worked with and sold a box of beer to twice a week for the past five years. It doesn't matter. No exceptions. However, it's only the person paying who needs to show ID. And our registers make us scan the ID to verify the age. A while back, I was watching my store self-checkout when two ladies came up to one of the stations, one older and one younger. They start scanning their items, then I hear the ping of the register calling for my attention. Turns out they had a bottle of wine. 
As I start to sign into employee mode, I tell the ladies I'll need to scan an ID from whoever's paying. The older woman takes hers out and holds it up for me and I ask her, are you the one paying? Side note, during the entire encounter, the younger woman never said a single word. Her, no, she is, me to the younger woman. Then I need your ID please, ma'am. Oldie, she doesn't have one, just use mine. Me, I can't do that, ma'am. I need the ID from whoever's paying. Her, but the wine's for me, she doesn't drink. Me, it doesn't matter, I have to ID whoever's paying. Her, but she's my daughter, why can't she buy it for me with my ID? Me, I'm sorry ma'am, but it's the law. We have to ID for alcohol, and we have to have it from whoever's paying. Her, snatches car from daughter's hand. There, see, now I'm paying, take my ID. Me, ma'am, that's not how it works. I know it's your daughter's card. It's her money. She's the one paying, so I need her ID. Her. Well, she doesn't have one. Me. Then are you able to purchase it yourself? Her. No. Me. All right, I'll take it off your order then. I remove the wine from her purchase, go put it in the go back bin, and quietly relished in her surprised Pikachu face and the glare I got when I wished them a nice day once they were done. Down in the comments, Jim Hab fan had this to say, it'd be fun to have a copy of the law on hand to read to people when the excuses start, but I buy alcohol here all the time. You reading the law to them verbatim. Gee, I don't see where they allow us to make an exception for previous customers. Do you? Customer, I'm 35 years old. Do I look under 18 to you? You reading the law to them verbatim. Gee, I don't see where they allow us to make an exception for someone who looks older. Do you? Repeat until customer's head explodes, or they finally give up. This next story was posted by Zero Penguin Party. Um, you are in the wrong store? This has happened so many times during my years in retail that if I had a dollar for every time it happened, I wouldn't have to work in retail anymore. What I am, of course, referring to is when a customer comes into the store, says a product is on special, and then eventually realises that it's on a special elsewhere or it was on special last week. Back at the turn of the century, I worked for one of the two major supermarket chains in this country. Let's call them Coles. The location I worked at was what I would call Supermarket Central. If you had a supermarket chain, you had a location within one kilometre distance. There were about eight or nine supermarkets within a one to two kilometre radius of our location. And just within the immediate vicinity, there were all four major chains the two majors, a third major that was about to go bust, and a fourth which is independently owned franchises, all within walking distance. So it was common for people to start to get confused what supermarket they were in. I was working the checkouts this one day when the customer, let's call him Mr C, comes in. I am there scanning his items when he notices a discrepancy with the price of an item. Mr C, excuse me, the price of that ice cream is wrong. Me, how so? Mr C, well, you've charged me $4, yet it's on special for $2. Me. Let me just check on that. Where did you see it advertised on special? Mr. C. It was in your catalogue. Me. Okay, let me just have a look. I then browse the catalogue and find no mention of the ice cream being on special. Me. I'm sorry, sir, but it's not in the catalogue. Mr. C. Yes, it is. Me. Sorry, sir, but I have just looked through the entire catalogue and it's not in there. Mr. C. Give that to me. Mr. C. grabs the catalogue out of my hands and then proceeds to look through it. He then looks through it a second time and then throws it down. Mr. C. This is the wrong catalogue. Why have you shown me the wrong catalogue? I want to speak to a supervisor. Me. Excuse me, sir, but this is the correct catalogue. If you have a look at the front page of the catalogue, you will see the dates that the specials are on for. Mr. C. Don't give me any of this nonsense. Leave all my stuff here. I'm going home to get that catalogue that you guys put in my mailbox to show you what the specials are. Me. Okay, sir. Mr. C left and I did a deferred sale even though I was not expecting him to come back. Amazingly, 30 minutes later he did and he came straight to my checkout trying to interrupt my sale. Mr. C. See, I told you. Me. Excuse me, sir. Do you mind waiting while I serve this customer? Mr. C. No, you pay attention to me and now me to the customer I check out. I'll just be a second to Mr. C. Fine, show me. Mr. C proceeds to open the catalogue straight to where the ice cream is on special 
but I had already noticed three things wrong with it, so I was going to bring each of them up one at a time. Me. Firstly, sir, the ice cream that is on special may be the same brand that you are trying to purchase, but it is the wrong size. Mr. C, what do you mean? Me. Well, the one you're trying to purchase is a two litre tub of ice cream. The one on special is the one litre tub. Mr. C, I don't care, still give me the special. Me. Well, if I was still to give you the special, it would be the same sort of special as there is off the one litre tub, which would mean that you would actually be paying more. Mr. C, this is flagrant misadvertising. Me. Secondly, look at the dates of the specials. This was last week's catalogue. Mr. C, I didn't know of the special last week. You should keep them running for longer. Me. And finally, I'd like you to look at the store sign above you. Mr. C. Okay, and... Me. And now, look at the logo on the front of the catalogue. Mr. C. And... Me. Now, compare the two. Are they the same? Mr. C. Um... Mr. C at this point became very quiet and quickly scurried out of there. Down in the comments, Intelligent Lake said, Poor ice cream. Ice cream is good and tasty. And now, if any is purchased, it'll only be eaten out of anger and spite. And it deserves better. Well, what a big waste of time for everyone involved. Why go through this whole rigmarole for a small discount on some ice cream? So weird. Okay, so now it's time to find out if the person who was playing Ding Dong Dash was drunk or a kid. He was, of course, a kid. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed what you have heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.